Oh hi, I'm the heretic. Late May of this year, I replied to the infographics show who asked this same question. What if people stopped paying taxes? The answer they came up with went something like this. There will be a populist movement that's against paying taxes. Politicians would try to buy them off with tax breaks or targeted concessions. And if that wouldn't work, they'd be labeled as terrorists. And if they got their way, society would collapse into literal mob rule and that country would be invaded by foreign states perceiving weakness. I already replied to that video and explained where they go wrong. But what I want to propose is a counter-narrative. What would really happen if people stopped paying their taxes? Now there's two ways they could do this, passively or actively. I'll start off exploring the active strategy as it leads into the passive strategy as you will see. Imagine a large number of people who want to keep their lifestyles the same, but they didn't want to pay taxes. Maybe they are against taxation on the principle that it is theft and a violation of self-ownership. Maybe they don't like what the government does with their money, or they just want to keep more of their money. The important part is that they don't want to pay taxes and actively work to make sure they don't have to pay. Naturally, this presents a problem for the government who relies on taxation to exist. So how will they respond? Now the mainstream media is only allowed to broadcast because the government says they can, who use the licenses to insulate them from competition. This makes the mainstream media beholden to the state. Collusion between the mainstream media and governments is well documented, such as with Operation Mockingbird in the US. So the mainstream media can be counted on to be the government's mouthpiece. And as the government's mouthpiece, they will dismiss the anti-taxers as crazy radicals, but otherwise won't see them as a threat while politicians will attempt to subvert anti-taxation movements for their own ends. Expect politicians to run on the platform of anti-taxation. Efforts to spread the message and inform people as to the merits of a tax-free society will be forcibly transferred into getting out the vote, even though that wasn't the goal of the movement in the first place. If this gets these politicians elected, those politicians will abandon the zero tax platform at first opportunity. With its identity inextricably linked to the careers of politicians who muscled their way into the movement in the first place, their failure will have a discouraging effect on supporters whose self-appointed leaders will claim victory when the government tries to buy them off with minor tax cuts, government subsidies, and other half measures. Gaining new supporters will be nearly impossible as people will have been galvanized against the politicians who rode on the coattails of that movement into power. We saw this happen with the Tea Party in 2010 and Occupy Wall Street at about the same time. Good luck convincing any Democrats about the Tea Party's message of smaller government when they dislike Michelle Bachman or Sarah Palin so much. Suffice to say, public outcry, especially when it's an existential threat to the state, must be subverted. And if that means the state needs to make a few sacrifices, or rather throw the peasants a few crumbs to keep the illusion of the will of the people in line, then so be it. What was it Marie Antoinette said? Let them eat cake? So for people who don't want to pay taxes, public movements aren't how you accomplish this change. True believers and the principled may already realize that they don't need to ask permission in order to avoid paying taxes. And no, I'm not talking about Caribbean tax havens or breaking the law. They can avoid sales tax through online shopping, avoid property tax by renting, transacting through cryptocurrency so that it's impossible for the government to tell if taxes are being paid or not. This is where the passive strategy I mentioned earlier comes into play. An anti-tax movement could start here, but if they start actively and they're serious about it, they'll end up here anyways. People who want to avoid paying taxes will transact with each other, creating gray market exchanges where people trade in direct cash or cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin such that the government has no idea what's happening and is powerless to tax it. Naturally, the bullying from the mainstream media and the political ruling class will escalate. 
participants themselves won't be condemned in the way that they were when they were a political movement, when late night talk shows stereotyped and strawmanned anti taxers. Instead, the message will be allegations that the gray markets and crypto exchanges, let's call them Agora, are hotbeds of criminal activity. Governments will pass legislation restricting them and making numerous high profile arrests and crackdowns in the name of the drug war and counter terrorism. The FBI will engineer false flag terrorist activity to justify this. You think the FBI wouldn't engineer a false flag to smear political opponents? Well, good for you, but you're wrong. Oh, so wrong. There will still be people who argue the government is justified in taxing people. We'll call them federalists. Conservative federalists will argue for taxation from a patriotic standpoint, while progressive federalists will say that paying taxes is the compassionate thing to do. Society will galvanize between the anti-taxers and the federalists. However, with large segments of the economy avoiding taxes, tax revenue will decline, not only for the national government, but for the regional and local governments as well. They might try to raise taxes, but it will drive more people into the tax-free gray markets. The very existence of the Agora will drive the Laffer Curve tax revenue peak closer to zero, meaning that the government won't be able to increase revenues by paying taxes. National governments will simply borrow and print money rather than cut spending, which will disincentivize foreign parties from lending to them in the future. And they may even force them to make significant cuts to spending through austerity measures as a condition of future loans. Printing will simply devalue the currency and lead to runaway inflation, as the supply of money can't help but skyrocket. Agora's exchanging in cash will be adversely affected as a result, but crypto will retain its value. Gold and precious metals will skyrocket. Since the national government's creditors will demand austerity as a condition for lending, government spending will have to decrease, especially in local governments who can't print money and have a much harder time borrowing the money they need. The services they used to provide will be increasingly taken care of by private alternatives, such as private security, private firefighters, homeschooling, private libraries, and yes, private roads. Local governments would have to sell off assets to keep pensions paid and increasingly outsource their services to private alternatives. However, this will be like stopping a runaway train with a stop sign. So they'll still be bleeding money. They'll be hemorrhaging so badly, local governments will look to the national government for help. This help, if provided, will be conditional on the local governments decreasing their autonomy and centralizing authority even further into the hands of the national government. Yet ironically, this will have the effect of hastening the collapse of the national government as local governments essentially become money sinks. The national government will try to squeeze the economy, calling in treasury bonds, trying to tax 401ks and other financial instruments, in addition to cracking down on agoras. Don't be surprised if they attempt to confiscate privately owned gold, like Franklin D. Roosevelt did in 1933 with Executive Order 6103. This will put the government police in conflict with private security, which will almost certainly come to blows sooner rather than later. Expect mainstream media to sensationalize the case of a private security officer who kills a government police officer to defend their client. The security officer will be in the right, even by standards of government law, but he will be put through the ringer of trial by media sensationalism. Doesn't matter if he was justified, the government media complex will need to make an example of him. Afterwards, these conflicts will become commonplace. Government police will aggress against people's property, especially as the government necessarily becomes more authoritarian, and private security will defend their clients. Claims by the government of people having taxable assets or income will be unprovable. The media will claim crime is rampant and regions protected by private police are lawless. Federalists might call for martial law against these anarchists, 
yet their claims will become increasingly hard to hear. As the government well of money dries up, the mainstream media will become unsustainable. Their viewers literally dying of old age. Their ad revenue will crumble, and they'll go the way of the dodo bird. Subsidized media like Facebook and Google will crumble under their own weight as well, while what will be referred to as the Wild West of encrypted blockchain internet, like Freedom Net, wink wink, will flourish, with little in the way of maintaining their propaganda as government schools fall by the wayside, popular support of taxation will crumble, especially when runaway hyperinflation makes participation in the Agora necessary for merely surviving. Fewer people will trade using government-issued currency, as the government can no longer pay the interest on its debt or meet its non-discretionary spending requirements, the state will have to declare bankruptcy and seek new ways to keep the lights on. Part of the conditions of this bankruptcy could be further austerity measures. Now, they might be able to get assistance from the Agora, but they will find their legislative power utterly worthless, as all economic restrictions, favoritism, and taxation will be completely unenforceable and what little they do get amounts to voluntary donations from civic-minded federalists. With all of their assets sold to keep the water boilers heated, and all their money coming from voluntary donations, the state's incentives will have to shift, serving the needs of those donors. At this point, the state will either dissolve completely, or adapt to these new incentives and become indistinguishable from the innumerable economic firms and vendors that, for the last several years, have been providing every possible good or service that used to be paid for with stolen money. Either way, this state will not survive the rise of the counter-economy. And that's what will really happen if people stop paying taxes. Now you might still have some questions, like how will courts and the police work without the state? What about the military? What will stop a foreign invasion? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll link videos where I answer those questions in the description. No matter what some doomsayers may think, we're going to be fine. You are going to be okay. Because following the state's final collapse, we will have lost nothing except our chains. Questions? Comments? Critique? How completely off the rails do you think I am? Anything you'd like to add? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.